In today's tutorial, we're going to look at a fairly easy method to go from something like this, a fairly organized collection of objects, into a nicely piled collection of objects. Uh, to do this, we'll be using the powerful tools in Maya of uh, MASH and the Bullet Solver. Uh, now, this is fairly easy to do, and you just have to follow uh, certain steps, and I'll walk you through those. You can see I've got a scene here with these two objects. We're going to rebuild this from scratch. So we're going to start with two objects here. I just have a, a capsule and a tablet. And you want to keep these fairly low resolution. So we're going to select both of these. And I'll just make sure, a couple things to make sure from the beginning is that they are in the center of the world. Transform attributes are set to zero, so translate rotate is, are set to zero, and scale is set to one. So if yours happen not to be, then you can go to edit, delete by type, history, and then also uh, modify freeze transformations. We'll select both of these things and then go into our FX modeling or our FX module. And we've got MASH here, and we'll create a MASH network. And here we do have to open the options uh, because the default is an instancer, and we want to create this as a mesh. So we're going to change this to a grid layout. Now we can change this afterwards too. So if you forget to do this, don't worry about it. So apply and close. So the first thing you'll notice is that it only took one of our objects. So it took probably the last one selected. Uh, and so we have the tablet here. If we look in the outliner, we have a couple of new things. We have a mash node and a mash repro mesh. If you selected the instance option for creating a mash, you'd have a mash instancer. If you ever want to change the geometry type, um, select the mash node and go to mash utilities and you can switch mash geometry type and it will toggle between the two. So you can see that there are a number of things associated with this, this MASH network. Uh, the MASH waiter, that's what this is called. Uh, the distribute node, which will be associated with every MASH network. And then because we selected MESH, we have a MASH repro MESH here. And it lists the objects that are in here. An easier way to take a look at this is to go to MASH and open the MASH editor. Everything under here is a mash node that can be added and rearranged. So let's first work on the mash distribute. So the distribution type here is grid, and we want to add some uh, duplicates in all dimensions, X, Y, and Z. And I'm just going to spread these out a little bit. So by changing the distance, X, Y, and Z attributes, and then we can add more tablets so and so we don't want them all organized in exactly the same orientation to begin with so if we go into the mash waiter we can select any of these um, nodes here the one we want is random so if we just left click on it we can say add random node and then you can see what the attributes are here and by default it will randomize its position or their position by one, one, and one in position X, Y, and Z. We don't want to randomize the position, or maybe we do, you can if you want, but I'm more interested in randomizing the rotation. You could randomize the scale as well if you wanted to do that, make it uniform, so just adjust one and they all change. But this wouldn't make sense for pills. Now, the next thing we want to do is get our capsule back in here. So if we look at our repro mesh, we can see that it lists the objects, tablet, the blue thing, pill, which is our capsule, um, but it is not appearing here. But to make this uh, work, we have to add another node, and in this case, it's the ID node. So I'm looking at this now, and I think maybe my capsule is too big. So there are different ways I could deal with this. Um, but the simplest by far is to simply go back to your original object. And you'll notice that when you create a mesh network, the original objects are hidden for you. So if I select my hidden pill and go to the channel box, and let's say I just reduce the scale 
to 0.75, you can see all of the pills change. But this is part of the uh, real strength of using MASH because it's a procedural uh, distributor of objects. You can go back into any of your nodes and make changes after the fact. Okay, let's return to the MASH ID node. So the ID type is linear, which is not really what we want. That just goes one, two, one, two, one, two between the indices. Let's change that to random. And if the randomness is not the type of randomness you want, you can just change the random seed here. So if I want to add a node, I've, as I've done before, I can go to the MASH waiter and select dynamics here. Another way you can add nodes is in the MASH editor itself. This drop down here will show you all the same nodes. So let's add a dynamics node here. So a number of things have happened. Um, if we look in the outliner, we can see that a new node is created here that's separate from the MASH network. So the MASH one bullet solver. So the bullet solver is a plugin that comes with Maya for solving uh, hard body dynamics. So th this allows things to collide with other things to uh, respond to forces in the world, uh, but not to deform them. So it's not a soft body. Uh, simulation, just a, a rigid body simulation. And you'll see on my screen here, there is this yellow square. This is the position of the imaginary ground. So if I select the bullet solver, you can see there's a ground here. If I turn that off, uh, it will disappear. I'm just going to make sure my playback speed, so I just right click in the timeline Go to playback speed. It has to be one of these play every frame options. So if I play the animation now, then we're getting dynamics. We're getting nice collisions. We can see some rolling here. That nice sort of uh, settling down. Um, so you can change some of the settings about the dynamics in the bullet solver. But you can also change settings about the dynamics in the MASH1 dynamics node here too. So let's start with the MASH1 dynamics node. So here we can see the collision shape is set to automatic. And this is the shape that um, Maya is using around each of these objects to determine how the collisions happen. So automatic is the default. If you want something more um, accurate to the actual objects, you can choose mesh. But these will be likely very similar in this case. Okay, so what else is in here? So we have collision shape scale. So if you want to add a little buffer zone, if you're finding intersections between your objects, you can up this a little bit. So then we have things like friction, rolling friction, damping, and so on. So when you're working in dynamics, it's always best just to change one thing at a time to see what the results are. So I can turn the friction all the way up to one. see now so that's great so they're not spreading out nearly as much so that's a much better pile while you're experimenting to make things run more quickly you can go back to your distribute node and turn these values down with fewer um, pieces it will simulate more quickly so if you're finding that things are slow for you you can reduce these and then when you're happy with the results you're getting you can go back and up the values again. Now, if we want this pile of pills to not land on an imaginary floor, but to land inside a cup or something, then we can add collision objects here. So let me just create something a little different than the floor. I'll just create a half of a circle. A sphere. Okay, so let me just delete some of these faces and I'm going to turn this thing inside out. Just reverse the normal so it's pointing in this way. I'm going to scale it down. Let's call this cup. To make this a collision object, you select your bullet solver in the attribute editor, and then you just middle mouse drag this object from the outliner 
into the Collider Objects section. So you'll notice um, something happen here. So when I first played this, uh, let me just show this. They fall down and they fall on sort of an invisible surface. And that's because if we select the cup shape under mash here, um, you can change the collision attributes here. But if you want to change this, we can change the collision shape to mesh. And then if we play it, it will respect the shape of the object, but you can see it's not doing a very good job of stopping these things from falling through. But instead of using a half sphere, I made a smoothed cube and deleted half of that. So you can see the polygons are much more regularly spaced and I have more of them. So one way to increase uh, collision fidelity is to have more polygons uh, in the collision object. And here, the automatic works. And I'm, to be honest, I'm not really sure why it works here, but not for the uh, sphere. But uh, it does work better. You can see there's some penetration through here where we can see the faces. But, oh, and this guy almost escaped. So if you are finding things almost escaping, we can try different things to fix that. We can add collision shape scale. Let's change it to 1.2. Just it'll be sort of inflate the collision object to maybe avoid that. Huh, that made it worse. So a smaller value actually makes it work better. So now you can see it's not quite on the surface but it is avoiding them coming through the bottom. Now that may not matter whether it comes through the bottom or not, but we can control it here. So that's set to 0.99. Nothing is coming through and they're pretty close to the surface. So you can do something like that. So finally, the question is, well, I just need this as a model. I don't need to animate this in my scene. How can I preserve it in this state? Well, that's why at the very beginning, we chose to use a, a mesh type of mesh rather than an instancer because the repro mesh is, has its own shape node. We can simply select the resulting repro mesh at a point where we're happy with it and duplicate it. So control D and just we'll move this out of the way. And now we have this object as a standalone, totally separate from the MASH network, and it won't react to changes in the MASH now. Um, let's say you decide later on that you want to add another type of object in here, so maybe a round pill. So we'll just create a sphere, and that's about the right size. And we want to add this to our repro mesh. So we can do that by going to our mash one repro mesh and we can add it in here. Now, hopefully we can just drag it in. Yeah, so it adds it in. And if you want this to appear now, you have to go back to your mash ID node and say the ID count is not two, but in this case now three, and it will swap in some of those. So you can easily adjust this after the fact so rubble, dish of candy, pile of pills. This technique can be used in lots of scenarios uh, for a good effect and to save you a lot of time uh, rather than placing these things manually with no editability after the fact. Okay, thanks.